All right, this is Roland from Press Check Consulting, and I'm here with Bill Blowers from TapRack. And today's primary and secondary video, we are going to talk about, uh, this is uh, along our, uh, our same theme here of Visible Laser Practice Day, we're going to talk about uh, staying within a specific size target. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Bill run a six-shot drill for time in the six by six shaded in box. And then we're gonna have him do the same drill, but constraining himself to the three by five head box. And we're gonna take a look at the difference in time uh, that when we, uh, when we run that drill. This will be done at uh, seven yards. Sure. Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. One point four nine. Stand by. One point six zero. Head. Head box. Head box. Stand by. Three point zero eight. And one out. One out. Stand by. Two point nine five. Oh no, two out. No, that was yeah, yeah, two out, and then a line cutter even. So a little bit more play there on the uh, on the laser, forced me to look at it. I think because I'm coming up, I'm also standing. Maybe I don't know if you notice that in my stance or not versus staying aggressive on the gun. Uh, maybe some factors in there. Obviously, all the body shots are, are clean, but plenty of room to work. So, uh, the fundamentals of marksmanship don't change. Uh, when you're using a visible laser, you still have to have proper body position and stance if you want to run that gun hard and fast. So, if you if you uh, get homo erectus and you stand up, uh, you're gonna end, you're, it's gonna result in slower splits. Uh, the other thing, much like uh, people that use red dot sights for the first time coming over from irons, the sight picture looks so beautiful that you end up uh, inducing uh, recoil anticipation flinch uh, or jerking the trigger because you want the gun to go off right meow because the dot's in the center of the target. With lasers, that is even exasperated more. So uh, it's not, uh, in my opinion, it's not coincidence that Bill had shots that were low as a result of uh, jerking on that gun and, and watching you can see that laser dipping out of the scorable area and getting down into, into the miss category. Speaking of scorable area, uh, we talked about this on another video. If you are really trying to push your own limits and you have some type of standard, uh, a target, scorable area, it is a good idea, it is a technique to ensure that that scorable area is very, very well defined so that you can keep your aiming point, whether it be a laser or a red dot, anywhere in that scorable area that it needs to be and have confidence that it's gonna go ahead and still be a hit. That's gonna allow you to really start to push aggressively on your speed and your cadence. If you don't know the edges of your standard or scorable area, you are gonna be much harder on yourself uh, in an effort to keep the rounds true center mass and you're not going to accept uh, that slop for the sake of speed. Slop that's still in the A zone is speed. Slop that takes you out of the A zone is now, you, you've now uh, expanded beyond uh, what you want as your standard. So by knowing that, you can make those micro muscle adjustments or slow your rhythm down to stay into that uh, scorable area, and it's going to give you an overall faster time. Bill, any thoughts? No, nah, man, good stuff right there. It's a, it's a good drill for me. I mean, I'm, I think I stayed aggressive on the body, and then as I transitioned to the head, just forced me to stand up like you're talking about, and I, it's, it's a good training drill. Awesome. Until next time, this is Roe from Press Track Consulting. If you guys, since you can't see him, he's doing a <laughs> giant bear stretch, build a top rack and primary secondary.